Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this episode, we're going to be continuing work on our project, our CAR 38 project. And I believe in the last episode, we had installed the battery boxes and talked a little bit about those. So let me uh, bring you up to speed where we are today um, and what's going to be happening going forward. So, made a lot of progress uh, that wasn't uh, recorded, but we're still at a good spot to share with you what we have done and what we're going to do. Just a quick review. We've got the battery boxes uh, in two locations. One goes under the seat and the other is in the rear, goes underneath that tank that we uh, we've shown you in the past. So you won't see either battery box there. One's inside of a, which looks like a fuel tank, a uh, big round 55 gallon drum kind of looking thing. And then the other one will be under the seat. So what we've done now is all underneath the hood and uh, you can kind of see a little bit of it there through the grill, but let's open the hood and take a look. Well, let's take a look and see what we've done. And we'll move the camera and kind of get a close-up and we'll look at both sides and give you the big picture. We're kind of going to work from the top down. Uh, so we'll pull the, this um, component board off the top. I think we showed you the motor mount before. If not, I will today. So nothing has been wired yet. We have just mounted everything. Everything is mounted and ready for wiring. Now, uh, down here you can see we've got the chain off the sprocket. Um, originally, you know, the gasoline engine mounted right where this mounting box goes. Um, and it had a centrifugal clutch, which just, which then turned this pulley here, which then went down to the, through the chain, down to the drive shaft and to the differential. This has a, a brake pad right there. It has what's called a dead man pedal. So in order to, to move the vehicle, you have to be pushing on the pedal, have your foot on the pedal, and that releases this brake and gave it some throttle, which Cause the centrifugal clutch to engage, and away you went. Well, of course, now it's converted to electric. We're still using the same uh, um, drivetrain, but the propulsion is different. It is now going to be powered by an electric motor, which we'll get a better look at because we're going to lift off this component board. But anyway, in the big picture, how it's going to work is when you press on the pedal, it releases this brake pad, and one thing we don't have on here now, there will be a, a piece here that will go over, and when this goes forward, it will tip up that switch. And that switch doesn't have to move very far, but when that switch goes up, it will turn on the motor, and it will go to a preset speed, and it will have a, a, a ramp speed and so forth so it will won't be jerky or anything it's going to take off nice and smooth and take you up to the desired speed somewhere between three and five miles per hour okay so since we're on this side I'll go ahead and talk about items on this side left to right here we've got our main power switch so turn that on that turns on uh, the 12 volts to the system, which this allows us to shut that off and there's no drain on our auxiliary battery. Now the auxiliary battery is going to have a trickle charger um, hardwired to it and so that can be maintained um, by just plugging in the trickle charger. So next to the on off switch we have a run and charge switch. So with the switch up this light would be on. When this is on, this light's on. When you're in the run mode, 
that's when, like I said, you press on the pedal and away you go. Or you can have it in the charge mode. And in the charge mode, that will allow you to plug in the charger, which is an off-board charger. We'll plug into the Anderson connector right there and charge our traction pack, which is stored in the battery boxes that we showed you a moment ago. So that's how that will work. And of course, it'll let you know that you're in either charge mode or run mode. Um, and then this is going to be for uh, an add-on that the customer may do later on as far as a remote kill switch. And so that's just going to be wired to where they can add that on top here or wherever they want, but this is where it will wire into the system. On top here we have the DC to DC converter. And so you have your output and we have the input. And we'll talk about those in a future episode when we're doing the wiring. Uh, we talked about the what we call the pedal switch. Then we have the cables come out that go to our motor, which is down there. Got our three phases. And then this is where the um, motor encoder cabling can go through because it's got a connector on it already. This has to be an oversized hole and then we're going to have a piece that goes on the outside of that to make that weather resistant. Um, and then we have a uh, um, gland nut down here just like we have here and these are the two inputs uh, from our battery pack and then let's walk around to the other side here and here's our battery pack main disconnect so of course it's going to come here first and from here it will go in to our boxes um, on the front of the boxes here we have two lights and anyone that's familiar with marine or aircraft you kind of notice this kind of light there's a red one and a green one and normally that's uh, you know port and starboard um, but we're going to use these um, as indicator lights so when the thing is fully charged your green light will be on and, and, and the whole time you're running when it gets down to time you know to our a threshold voltage where it's time to charge it the green light will go off and the red light will come on and once it's fully charged the red goes off and the green comes on okay so it's idiot proof nobody has to look at a gauge or or anything like that Red comes on, time to, you know, put it on the charger. Green's on, red's off, she's ready to roll, so forth. Uh, this is just cabling hanging here uh, that comes from our pedal switch. Here is a throttle. Uh, and you can see that it's rigidly connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, set the throttle at a point that we want and then it can't be tampered with, not easily, okay? And so hit the pedal switch, it'll take you up to a set speed. Uh, this is just inlet for the um, 12 volt wiring. And, um, and that's pretty much it. Here's the, the motor, which I'll show you, you know, with the top off here in a moment. You can see we have a, a dual belt system. Um, we've got new belts for it. We've already tested all of that as far as fitment. And so all that's ready to go. Uh, but this is all going to be disassembled. This needs to be painted. Um, but let's finish our look up here. Let's take a look inside these two boxes. Okay, the boxes are latched closed. Just takes a, a key to open them up. So I'll open them both up. And we'll take a look at this one first. And there's a part in here that's not installed, and I'll show you that in a moment. Just wanted to be able to see inside here. So basically, we have some relays against this wall, we have our switches and our indicator lights. On that, and we've got some terminal strips, and then we have 
our passageway here. Got some grommeted covers, and this is the grommets are all pinched together there between these two boxes. So it's just a, you know a, a weather resistant or watertight probably um, passage between the two boxes. Inside the front box here, we have our inverter. That's a um, 450 amp inverter. Um, you can see we have a, a relay over here. We've got a terminal strip. We've got our main contactor. We've got our charge contactor. And we have a shunt. So that's pretty much the contents of this front box. So, you know, there will be control wiring here. This is our plug to the controller, and wiring will go back and forth, and so forth. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the front box, and again, like I said, we'll show you more when it starts getting wired. Let me get the piece that goes in here that's missing and show you where, what covers this front box. I just set this in there. It is actually secured uh, by a couple screws here and it goes into a, a notch there. And what we have is all of our instrumentation here. So everything is in these weather tight boxes. Uh, you can see the seals and is locked in there so that unless you have this special key just keeps you know prying <laughs> eyes and hands out um, because like I said it's, it's, it's designed to be idiot proof you plug it in or you go you just have two switches to deal with on run and charge hopefully that's you know simple enough but inside here, we have the ability to uh, monitor what's going on. We have our JLD 404, which is monitoring our traction pack. We have our Curtis uh, gauge here with the menu switch. We have an hour meter just to keep track of the runtime. And we have our 12 volt gauge which again lets us be able to know if our DC to DC converter is working so forth so that's that's it pretty simplistic fairly compact everything of course fits under the hood with lots of room around it and serviceability so let me uh, let me lift it off and show you what's you know, kind of a, a little better close-up view of the motor. Well, here's the motor without the component board on it. And like I said, you can see the four bolt holes. It just lifts off really easy. It's not very heavy. And away it goes. Um, and then there's uh, eight bolts to remove the motor from the mount or four bolts and you can remove the mount and the motor. So it's just in there right now, like I said, for fitment. We're gonna disassemble things. Um, probably for time sake, I don't know if we're gonna have that powder coated or painted. But anyway, what we have here is just sitting in there, but this is our um, part of our encoder setup. This is the optical sensor. Um, and of course our battery, our battery, our inverter connections down there. So you can see nice short runs bloop, right up to here. This is the high performance electric vehicle systems AC12 motor. Uh, later on I guess I can show you the the stats for that. I don't know if we did that earlier or not. When we were deciding on which motor to use, it was based on the RPMs that it needed to turn, which we showed that in a previous video. 
um, and what the uh, current draw would be, so forth. So we want this thing to have minimal current draw, so we have the greatest amount of runtime. We wanted it to have um, minimal current draw so that the motor and inverter uh, run cool. This is an air-cooled motor. Um, it has a fan on the back side here underneath this cover. Um, and the inverter, uh, there, there's a hole cut out in that box where the inverter is. And so the inverter is mounted directly on that aluminum plate. And so that's a 12 by 24 inch, I think it's 3 16 or quarter inch thick aluminum plate right up there where it's getting the air just like the motor. Um, and so based on the anticipated uh, load and current draw, everything should run real, real nice. But we'll thoroughly test everything before the customer picks it up. So anyway, that's the current status. Now the fun part. If, if you ever watched any of our videos, you know the part that I enjoy the most is the wiring. So we're going to run the wire for the traction system as well as for the 12 volt control system. So we're going to have um, our most negative will be in the back here. It'll come out of this side of the battery box and it will run up front and go into that front box and directly to our shunt. Out of the other side of our rear battery box, it comes out, goes down, and there's back up under here, there's our fuse. It'll go to the fuse from the fuse. It will come out, go to our front battery box, through the front battery box, and join the negative underneath here and come forward and again go into our front well before it goes to the front it goes to our disconnect switch and into the front box and from there to the main contactor that's our traction pack system okay 12 volts will come from our battery around here and goes into our rear box and all that controller wiring will be uh, done and that's it okay pretty simplistic like I said the um, the drivetrain and everything was left as it was so we're not reinventing the wheel or doing anything there we're, we're using their you know dead man pedal setup that uh, allows you to uh, this is loose so that we get the belts on and off but um, yeah all of that is the same so anyway, hope you enjoyed this little update on the car 38 project. <laughs> and like I said, uh, we'll, we'll bring you some updates um, once I start wiring. But like I said, next thing to do is take care of this mount, then reinstall it. Um, put the belts on, self set the tension, and all that will be uh, done. And then we'll put the control board back on and start wiring. Or I may just wire it at the workbench. That might be a little easier for me uh, as far as bending over and so forth. Old back, so like to be as comfortable as possible. So until next time. Thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, all that other stuff. Hope to see you next time.